So when you're drawing out the brachial plexus, I like to start with a basic shape and then fill in the details. So the basic shape starts with two bow and arrow type looking things. The first one's facing in this direction. The second one is facing in the opposite direction. And the last one is facing in the same direction as the first one. At the end here, you're going to join these two to meet to make like a little rocket ship. And then you're going to add these three protrusions, which are going to be nerves at the end. So then we're going to start with a mnemonic that helps us divide this into the different sections of the brachial plexus. The mnemonic is Robert Taylor drinks cold beer. So here we're going to use the first letters of each of these words to help us divide the brachial plexus. So the R is for roots, the T is for trunks, the D is for divisions, the C is for chords, and finally the B is for branches. So we're going to start with the roots. We start with C5, go down C6, C7, C8, and lastly, T1. So we're going to make circles here because it helps us later on in the diagramming process. And then we're going to move on to the trunks. So when I think of a trunk, I think of a trunk of a tree. We have the upper trunk. We have the middle trunk. And then we have the lower trunk. Now we can move on to the divisions. So for the divisions, I like to draw an X shape and then a half an X. So divisions are kind of hard to picture in a one dimensional drawing. The divisions are labeled and named based on their relation to the radial artery. If you were to take a cross section of the axilla. So I like to highlight them so you can see where things originate from and where they join and what they create. So we're going to take one color here and our other color here. So we have anterior divisions, these two of which join together. And then we have this other anterior division. And then here we have our posterior divisions in yellow which join to form the posterior cord. So the anterior divisions up here join to form the lateral cord. And this anterior one joint, it just goes on its own to form the medial cord. Okay, so now we've got our roots, trunks, divisions, and cords. Now we have to do our branches. So there's another mnemonic device used to label the branches, and that's MAR-MU. So we're going to start M-A-R-M-U. So that gives us some hints. So now what do these stand for? So I like to kind of divide this little part up myself because these are the peripheral nerves that us hand therapists see on the regular. So this one would be median, this would be radial, and this would be ulnar. So those are easy. Then up here, you're going to have your musculocutaneous nerve, and here you're going to have your axillary nerve. Now, we have a few more details of branches to add in. So um, we're going to start back over here by C5. We're going to join together C5, C6, and C7 and make a little offshoot here. We're going to add a little offshoot there. We're going to put two little branches under the upper trunk. We're going to put three branches below the medial cord. We're going to put three below the posterior cord. We're going to put one above the lateral cord. And now we have to label them. 
So this one's easy to remember because it's nice and long. So that's going to be our long thoracic nerve. And then this one I remember because it looks like the dorsal fin of a shark. So that's going to be our dorsal scapular nerve. And then off of this upper trunk, there are going to be S's. Suprascapular. And then the subclavius. Off of the lateral cord, we're going to see the lateral pectoral nerve. And then I like to go back down here because then we're going to also have a medial pectoral nerve. And while I'm down here, I might as well finish this medial cord. And I remember that there are two other M nerves here. One is the medial brachial cutaneous nerve. And this other one is the medial antebrachial cutaneous nerve. Now we're almost done. We have three more coming off the posterior cord. We have something upper and something lower. So that's something to remember. And then this one is the thoracodorsal. So the upper and lower are the subscapular nerves. So we have upper subscap and lower subscap. And that's the brachial plexus. So if you create this when you sit down to take your exam, obviously as you practice it, you'll be able to do it more closely or more quickly rather. And then any questions about where nerves generate from, um, you can easily follow your pathways back to those roots and answer the questions in a timely fashion. Hope this was helpful.